In the last episode, uh, we were looking at uh, the creation of a program that will read in data from uh, a web service. Um, so this is the web service or the results from the web service and it'll load in building data from the Miami campus. If you didn't see the last episode, uh, uh, you should probably w watch that. Um, what I did was I set up the program uh, by uh, accessing the uh, uh, the ti.network create HTTP client. Um, I added an onload function here and an on error function. Um, I'm opening the URL to the web service and then sending the uh, the request. And now what I'm going to do is uh, in my onload function, which is called when the data gets read from uh, the uh, the web service. Uh, I'm going to uh, actually handle all of the uh, uh, all of the the the, da the data from the XML file. Okay, so there's a, a couple of commands that I want to use uh, in this part. Uh, I first want to set up a building uh, variable that is going to read um, the uh, see the response XML. And then the document element that get elements by tag name. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look for all of the tags within the document uh, that are named name. And if we look at the XML data, what this is actually doing is it's going to look through this entire document here. Um, all the XML and it's going to look for these entries. So this that name and the uh, alumni hall. So it's going to pull in all of these uh, all of these elements. Uh, so that's the first piece. And then I also need to get all of the uh, all the codes. So I'm going to say co codes. Actually, let me call this buildings. I'll call this codes, and this uh, the command is going to look exactly the same, except instead of name, I'm going to use code here. Okay, so uh, anyway, so the once the uh, once the data is read from the net uh, from the network, uh, it gets put into a uh, a large document structure, and then we can use these commands. This response XML dot document element get elements by tag name to essentially look for all of the data that is prefixed with either name or code or anything that uh, is contained within the document within each one of these uh, within each one of these building structures. So I can look for latitude and longitude and type and so forth. Okay, so. Um, once we've done that, what we want to do is create a loop that will iterate through all of the uh, all of the buildings. So I'm going to use this for loop. So for variable i equals zero, i less than buildings dot item dot length. Let's build yeah. Um, so I'm going to do this uh, for however many items were found uh, in the document that have this name. So what this buildings then is, is this is an array. It's an array of building names. And this other one is the array of building codes. All right. So we're almost done here. Uh, this is uh, this loop is going to iterate through uh, the list, and now I want to populate this data array. So I'm going to use the push command, push, and I'm going to create uh, this JSON uh, a, a JSON data element. So I need the curly brace. And then I'm going to provide the uh, the key for the for each of these. So I'm going to create one call key one key called name, and this is going to contain buildings dot item at i. Tag. 
text, and then another one for code. This is codes the item and I that text. All right. So uh, this format here corresponds to what I had in my example before. Um, so it would look something like name Benton Hall and code BN. Something like that. Okay. All right. So uh, that's it. That's everything. So I've created my data array. And now that's going to be passed to this table module that's going to populate my uh, my table within the um, uh, within the uh, within the app. So let's run it. So I'm going to uh, go to the iPhone simulator. For the simulator to come up here. If I've done everything correctly, I should get that whole list of items. Yep, so there's the list of all of the buildings on the campus. I can scroll through the whole thing. Uh, let's take one of these. Let's take Patterson Place. Click on that. We have the building, Patterson Place, and the code PAT. And we look at Benton Hall, is the building, and the code. Okay, so anyway, that's, uh, that's all there is to it. Now, uh, something I want to mention here about uh, the way that uh, the data is being read. Uh, it's being read asynchronously, which means that uh, the uh, uh, the call is made here to uh, uh, to read the data. So this is an asynchronous call. And so the app is free to go off and do whatever else it needs to do and wait, uh, but then also wait for uh, the, uh, the data to be read. And uh, once the data is actually read, that's when this, uh, this event handler is, is, uh, is executed. So this is this is the onload event handler. So once the data is actually all read, the onload event is generated, and then this code is executed. Uh, and the same thing with the, you know if the data if there's an error with the data, then the data is uh, then this method is is called. So actually let me uh, let me do something here and uh, let's let's quit the quit the program. I'm shutting the network off on my uh, on my computer, uh, and then I'm going to run the code again. Um, so my network is off, and the app is going to come up here in a second. Let me see if I can get the simulator moved into the viewing window quickly enough. Okay, so now uh, that the app is starting up, we'll get our red screen, this will come up, and then it's going to try to read the network uh, data. It's not going to find the network, and so uh, we're going to get this error, and this is when the alert comes up. So, uh, but both of these, uh, both of the events, so either actually reading the data or uh, getting this error, those are things that happen uh, as events. So once the uh, once the network is uh, undetectable and the data isn't read, then this method is called. Uh, in the other case, the data is actually read, and then this method is called. But again, those happen asynchronously. So you can, uh, in your program, uh, you can be doing other things visually uh, within the app um, while the data is actually being read. Okay. So anyway, that completes uh, that completes this lesson. Again, it is in two parts. If you missed the previous part, um, I do invite you to go back and watch that as well. Um, so anyway, that concludes this lesson.